In our last installment of the mental health series, we talk about coping mechanisms needed to help us better deal with our mental health challenges. In previous episodes, we spoke about various mental health challenges and concerns and how they can affect us at our places of work. What remains is how we can best cope with these challenges to lead a more fruitful life. Joining us this evening is therapist at Botswana Network for Mental Health, Gudlano Mutudi. Gudlano, thank you so much for coming on First Issues. We've spoken about, um, you know, different mental health conditions in um, mental health conditions and, you know, mental health challenges in our series. But right now, I think it would be beneficial to, you know, find out what is the best way to deal with these mental health challenges and other issues of life as they come. When it comes to coping mechanisms, there's no good, there's no structure on how to deal with a certain mental health challenge. You know, what works for you may not work for me. What works for her may not work for him, mm -hmm. you know. So it's important to look into yourself, right, and figure out what makes you happy, what activities do you enjoy, you know, engage in those activities. And if it means swimming, go for swimming more often. If it's football, go for football more often. You know, physical exercise is also very beneficial when it comes to your mental health. If it's sitting down with a friend, Sit down with your friend, you know, socialize, you know, mm -hmm. engage in things that bring out positive emotions, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, look into things that help you relax, mm -hmm. I guess. Things that help you calm down, you know, if it's reading a book, if it's taking deep breaths, mm -hmm. that's a deep breath exercise. Mm -hmm. If it means doing what we call progressive muscle relaxation exercises, engage in that, mm -hmm. you know. So try to figure out uh, certain activities that boost, uh, bring out positive emotions, things that help you relax as well. And these are activities or things that you can put into your coping mechanisms, right? Mm -hmm. And also look into your triggers. What triggers certain uh, negative or unpleasant emotions? Try to avoid those things or find ways um, to, 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 to cope with those things that trigger certain emotions, you know. If it also means engaging in more positive self-talk, you know, these are things that you can engage in to help you cope. If something happens that makes you feel worthless, remind yourself that um, failing at my exam, for example, doesn't necessarily mean that I'm a worthless person, you know. These are what we call positive self-talk. Remind yourself of your self-worth. Remind yourself that um, you deserve to be treated with at least, at the very least, you know, human decency. Gudlano, there has been so much advocacy um, towards therapy as one of the coping mechanisms for uh, mental health um, conditions and challenges. I think the question now would be, is this suitable for everybody, you know, or can the statement be, this, or this advocacy, be viewed as a one-size-fits-all approach to mental health challenges where the size can be too big, or too small for other individuals? Ideally, therapy encompasses a lot of uh, challenges, right? You can go it's broad from depression to anxiety to grief to all these other mental health challenges that exist, including personality disorders, mm -hmm. right? So it, it tackles a lot of areas, right? But unfortunately, one size does not fit all. What works for another individual may not work for another, mm -hmm. you know? And it's important that when, it, when somebody comes for therapy, they come with um, an open mind so to speak you know they need to have the the strength or the ability to face certain demons about themselves mm -hmm. you know unpleasant things that they have been running away from or that they have not been aware of they need to have uh, uh, you know the strength to actually face those challenges and to be open to criticism as well because in as much as uh, therapists are there to help you one way that can they can help you is by helping you see certain unpleasant things about yourself you know, we're honest in that aspect. If I can see that you are engaging in what we call self-destructive behavior, you know, it's my responsibility to, put, to, to, to bring it up in session and tell you that I think these certain behaviors may not be good for you, mm -hmm. you know, and you should uh, be in a mental state that you can actually take in that kind of um, constructive criticism.
you know. So there are certain uh, personalities that we that can make an in, an individual an unlikely candidate for therapy. Mm -hmm. If, for example, you're close-minded, if you have difficulty introspecting, you know, if you don't want to introspect, you know, if you don't want therapy, mm -hmm. how can you benefit from therapy if you don't want it, mm -hmm. you know, and if you're not committed to it as well. Um, therapy is not something that works from one session, you know, it's, it's a process. It can take even up to six months, if not more. You know, so we need to be committed to our therapy sessions. If your your therapist gives you gives you homework, for example, do the homework. You know, these are certain things they learn what they can um, influence the way you progress in therapy. In Africa, help is what we do. That is why we at FNB are relentlessly driven to provide real help to you. The passionate and courageous, the creators and the optimists. These are the entrepreneurs we support, the communities we uplift. It is because of you that real help is what we do. FNB, how can we help you? This program was brought to you in association with First National Bank of Botswana. FNB, how can we help you?